Here I am in Taiwan, kind of stuck in Taiwan, but not really stuck because it's actually really, really safe here. Very, very thankful to be able to stay here during these difficult times. I thought I'd make this video to talk to you about a few things related to uh, gypsy jazz, but not just gypsy jazz, just learning music in general, how I learn songs. But before we get started, um, I'd like to say that this content that you see for free on YouTube takes a lot of time and effort and even money to make because I have my assistant behind this camera helping me out on sound engineer duties and rhythm guitar. All this to say that if you like this content, you know, you can consider liking, subscribing, posting a comment so that I can trick the YouTube algorithm into promoting my video. And this in turn gets me views, which in turn gets me a little bit of money actually. And this allows me to make more free content. Furthermore, for those who are not aware, I am the owner of a website called DC Music School where I've produced lessons for so many really well-known musicians. You can check out all those links in the description box. And right now the entire site is on discount for the holidays until the end of the year. So if there's something that you like and you want to support me somehow, not only support me but support artists, um, well, you can check out the website. At the beginning of the next year, I will be sending the artist's share of, uh, of profits. And some of these artists are suffering tremendously right now. So I'm looking forward to being able to give them a little bit of financial relief. Last year, I recorded two albums, one with my good friend Duvet Dunayevsky and another one with the legendary Jimmy Rosenberg. We were never able to officially release the physical CDs yet, uh, for Jimmy anyway. And... Um, you can find this, the albums on Bandcamp. So if you enjoy the music that we do, you can consider purchasing those albums. Last but not least, related to this video, is a series of beginner gypsy jazz courses that I recorded last year and released for the first time this year. And I'm very, very happy that it's gotten a lot, a lot of positive review. So it's beginner gypsy jazz courses. So far we've recorded four volumes. I'll record maybe three or four more for next year. These lessons teach you gypsy jazz from A to Z, from really from scratch. And I have the beginner in mind. Now, I don't mean beginner, someone who just picked up the guitar for the first time, but someone who knows a few basic things, maybe has never ever improvised, but doesn't know how to start with uh, how to start learning gypsy jazz. So I guide you through uh, a historical perspective, explaining why things are done the way they're done, who does this, who does that, and etc. For a style as codified as Gypsy Jazz, there are actually numerous paths you can take. So I show you all these little possibilities. All these little possibilities. These lessons are not meant to replace a teacher or other courses or anything. In fact, it encourages you to go seek out a second, third, fourth opinion from different people, use different resources. These lessons are ideal for people who have no access to a community of players or access to a, a teacher, uh, a live teacher, not online, because right now online is still not really possible to jam. Maybe one day it will be. But yeah, it's to help you self-teach yourself. So I explain everything in, in as great a detail as possible. Nonetheless, I also encourage you to seek out other expert opinions 
and so that you can form your own idea of how you want to learn this style of music because there's just there's not just one single way i present to you what i think is the most log well one of the most logical ways so that's that in this video i thought i'd make a beginner kind of lesson but it can be of use to many of you even if you're a little bit more advanced i want to teach you how i would learn or how i would teach a song to someone and we're going to look this at various stages from like absolute beginner to beginner to intermediate to a little bit more advanced so if something is a bit too easy you can always skip ahead so this is going to be another long video most people when they get into gypsy jazz one of the first few songs that they tend to want to play would be minor swing uh, or dark eyes and we're going to choose dark eyes for today because minor swing is a little bit unusual in that it doesn't have a typical form dark eyes um, has a melody and then for the improvisation you improvise over the the same chord progression as the melody whereas in minor swing you have an intro section that's a part and then a soloing section that's a part and then an outro section so we're going to do dark eyes so you can apply this uh, what you're going to learn in this video to other songs the first thing i would do would be to teach the chords and i would use um simple chords so we're going to take a7 like this and for some reason if you're not good at looking at shapes visual shapes you can go to sound slice where this will be fully transcribed in notation or tablature nonetheless i think it's a very useful skill to develop the ability to observe and to replicate this is actually part of the traditional gypsy education in europe so A7 is the first chord you need to know. The second chord, we'll take an easy D minor. We'll talk about duration in a second. Hopefully you know this D minor. I would place my index finger in such a way that it blocks the low E. Because we're going to be strumming all the strings. Or some people do the, use the thumb here to cover the bass, five. And some of, I don't have such long fingers to cover two notes. But let's just do this one. Then we're going to go back to A7. And then we're going to go back to D minor. And then some of you who play gypsy jazz already will say, Wait a minute, that's not right. I'll explain that later. And then we're going to the second half of the song. We're going to play G minor like this. Simple G minor bar chord or with a thumb. The reason why you consider using the thumb is it's a little bit less tiring when than a bar chord, which demands a little bit of force. So G minor like this, or like this. And you don't have to play this note here. Back to D minor, to A7, and then to D minor. Two bars each. I'm going to play it once for you. top of the form we are in the key of D minor by the way now in gypsy jazz today no one plays dark eyes this way even though actually Django played it the way I showed it to you people played another way based on a recording that Django did at one point in his life where the bass player and the I think it was the bass player, maybe even the rhythm player not exactly sure uh, after the second a7 they played B flat but Django was always improvising over D minor. So that's why I want to show you the original version. Furthermore, well, original version. Furthermore, the original, original version of Dark Eyes is a waltz. So it's a Russian tune that jazz musicians like to play in the beginning of the 20th century. The first half, like uh, Oscar Peterson recorded it. It was not just Django. It's not, it's not quote unquote, a gypsy song. It was actually a popular jazz tune back in the day. So let me show you how to play the rhythm. Uh, there are so many ways to do this, so this, this is kind of a crash course. We're going to do something very basic. With the right hand, um, we're just going to strum quarter notes. Don't do anything fancy because you might be tempted to do all sorts of things like... But all the best players hate that. There's a reason why the be best players don't do it. 
it's because it sounds really, really terrible when you're really experienced in this stuff. So keep it simple, just quarter notes. Um, okay, keep in mind though, there are many ways to do it. But here's something very basic, just downstrokes. I would suggest for the first beat that you brush the strings like so. Do you hit all the strings, the bass strings? Not everyone has a different opinion. Um, for, for why not just get at least four strings-ish. If you have happen to hit all the strings, so be it. The most important thing to do is as you strike the strings that you hear more of the bass than the treble. So here's the first beat. And here's the second beat. You're gonna whip the strings. Um, there's the same debate. Should you hit all the strings or maybe just the treble? Some people aim for the treble. Some people aim for all the strings. No matter what though, as you strike the strings, you want the treble to sound a bit more. So it's gonna be like this. And that should be enough to get started. One thing to be careful of is not to play the two and four too loud. You don't want... Sounds terrible. Roughly the same volume. It's the way you strike the strings that's going to be different. The two and four have a quicker snap with the wrist. Okay, uh, one other thing. It might not be easy in the beginning, but try to keep the rhythm in uh, light in volume, in terms of volume, soft, but with the same intensity. Okay? And then, what I would do with this is actually just play along to recordings of Django Reinhardt. He recorded this song three times. And even if on the version where there's like, you can hear a B flat in the bass, just play D minor. It actually still works. D minor with a B flat bass is just B flat major seven. Uh, practice a lot of rhythm, trying to lock in with the rhythm section and to develop your ears. Next step is to learn the melody. And I'm going to play it for you right now in a very, very simple way with my accompanist. Here it is very slowly. It starts on a pickup, meaning before the rhythm guitar actually starts. One, a two, a one, two. That was a very, very boring way of playing it, but if you're a complete beginner, that's a good way to start. And if you want, you can learn it in a different octave. Here it is one more time. One, a two, a one, two. play the melody in a, in a little bit more of an advanced way but this is enough for now uh, learn the melody and learn to know how the melody interacts with the chord meaning da, da, ba, da. that's where the note lands so most of the time the way I played it this time it always starts on B3 before the measure starts three four one okay so this is assuming that you're a complete beginner to the style that you've never improvised before, that maybe you haven't played so much lead guitar before. Maybe something just very basic. So hopefully you know those chords at least, because those were very simple chords. As far as the right hand technique is concerned, that's a huge topic, I'm not even gonna talk about that. Use whatever technique you're comfortable with. If you don't play with a pick, you play with fingers, so be it. The only advantage that I have of having a pick is that you can play with good projection. How do you start improvisation on this song? This is a very, very big topic. And I want to show you the way most gypsies learn. Um, well, first of all, they listen to a lot of music. And then they, by instinct, they hear something and then they try to reproduce it on the guitar. 
So what I'm gonna do with you for you is instead of showing you scales, modes, or things like that, because that's not actually how they learn this style of music, and it's not really the method for improvisation for this style. For other styles, maybe, but not for this one. I want to show you a few basic phrases. And here's a beginner edition of phrases. Over the A7 chord, since we're in this position, try to visualize the chord shape that you're going to be playing over. It can be this shape, A7, or this shape, or this shape. In fact, the more shapes you, you can visualize, the more it might help you. And here's the first phrase. I'm going to play it very slowly on my own. A one, two, three, four. One more time. And again, if it's too fast for you, you can actually slow down this video or you can watch this video in sound slice with the transcription. But basically it starts on the third of the chord. And now uh, we're gonna play it with the rhythm guitar. One, two, a one, two, three, four. And that's what it sounds like. So then, when you encounter a chord like this, this is A7, let's say you're in another song and you encounter, for example, a B7, you can do the same thing. This is your first lick over B7, uh, over a dominant chord. One, a two, a one, two, three, four. This works especially well when you're in a minor key. So you do this over the dominant chord. So in this B7, we would be in the key of E minor, for instance. Just for fun, let's go to a completely different key, like A minor, so a E7. So this will work over minor swing. One, two, a one, two, three, four. Okay? And if you're someone who's a little bit more advanced or more creative, then of, of course you can change the fingerings and try it somewhere else. For now, that is beyond the scope of what I'm showing you. Now, the next phrase we have to look at is something over D minor. So here's one that's pretty simple for beginners, I hope. I'll play it alone. A one, two, three, four. One more time. A one, two, three, four. Hopefully I played it the same way because I just made this up. If there's a slight variation in the rhythm, I apologize. But hopefully you get the idea. Here it is with the rhythm guitar. One, a two, a one, two, three, four. Now we have a phrase for A7 and D minor. Of course, and you can take that D minor and try in different minor keys. But um, let's play the whole song now with just these licks. One, two, a one, two, three, four. Again, this is the kind of for the level where you're just discovering improvisation for the first time. For me, especially in this style of music, improvisation is a language. You're not going to master a language overnight. It's going to happen very gradually. And in the beginning, you'll only be able to say the most basic things. Hi, my name is Dennis. How are you? I'm doing well. Fine, thank you. Eventually, in the beginning, you probably sound like a robot, but eventually you'll start to learn all the little details to sound more native. But this is a really good way to start. Notice what I did over the G minor. I took the D minor phrase. I looked for the G minor chord. So here's the D minor chord. I looked for the G minor chord, which is here. So then what's cool about um, Dark Eyes is that it's the same song as minor swing. So you can use the same ideas. I'm not gonna teach minor swing in this video, but if you're really interested in what I, what I have to offer, check out the beginner series that I did. It goes really like extreme detail but here i'm just going to do over the soloing section of minor swing a bit fast one two i want two three four There we go. 
So you see, because minor swing has the same chords but in a completely different key, I can use the same idea. So that's the process we're going to use. Step two, it's not enough to have just one phrase for each chord, maybe two to start with. Start with, depends how fast you learn. If you're a very slow learner, stick with this for however long you need to. And then when you're ready, let's add another one in the same position. Here's another phrase that you can do, something very simple that I just came up with in the moment. It goes like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, and three, and four, one, two, and with the rhythm guitar. One, two, three, four. And let's look at a phrase over D minor. So here's a phrase over D minor, another phrase in this position. With the rhythm guitar. One, two, three, four. So now with these two phrases per category, we enter the realm of choice. You're starting to improvise, you're making choices. I'm gonna use this phrase this time, and next time I use another one. I'll do two choruses now and we'll see what happens over dark eyes. One, a two, a one, two, three, four. I said two choruses but one was enough and sorry at one point my my hand slipped and I played something not very clean but you get the idea I hope and you can do the same thing over minor swing which I won't do right now and then you can start to explore different positions so you have two phrases over a7 in this position two phrases over D minor in this position you can find two phrases of a7 in this position and two phrases in D minor so here's one phrase in A7 in this position over here. Try to see this chord. With the rhythm, one, two, three, four. And we can take the same sequence, try it over D minor. Here it is, alone. And with the rhythm, one, two, three, four. And now here's Dark Eyes. And hopefully you get the idea. I'm going to go a little bit faster just to illustrate the point. One, a two, a one, two, three, four. One more phrase in this position, A7. I'm kind of making this up on the spot, like trying to think of things that kind of sound in the style but are very easy for people who are not so technically advanced. So here's another phrase over A7. Slower, one, two, three, four. With the rhythm, one, Two, I want two, three, four. There we go. Over a D minor, let's see what we can do. I realize that the phrase I showed you here works quite well here too. But I'm going to do something different. Here it is. Try to picture this chord, D minor. Alone, in time. One, two, three. Four. And with the rhythm. One, two, I want two, three, four. So now we have two phrases in this position, two phrases in this position for each type. So that's what? Eight phrases in total, right? 
let's see now you have a lot of choices that you can make um, I'm going by pretty fast so you have to do everything in sequential order or choose the one that you prefer first and stick with it for however long you need to before you try to tackle everything at the same time it can take a week it can take two weeks three weeks doesn't matter work at your own pace let's see what happens one two I want two three four <laughs> There we go. We have completed phase one, super beginner. Um, again, this is not real improvisation, it's just like copy and paste licks, but it's a really good way to start. And a lot of uh, musicians in the gypsy community kind of start out this way, especially in Holland. But don't forget, always listen to good players. And if you hear something, try to replicate what you hear and try to make it work. Like listen to different versions of Dark Eyes on YouTube from good gypsy jazz musicians like Stokola Rosenberg, Jimmy Rosenberg, uh, Kanye West, Birelli Lagrand, Angelo Debar, etc. Phase two. Now I keep talking about this gypsy way of learning. I'm not saying it's the best way to learn because actually there are some improvements that can that can be made because a lot of them are don't know much about theory, don't know anything about scales or arpeggios or anything like that. And some of that knowledge can actually help out. And so for this phase two, I'm gonna actually talk to you about arpeggio shapes. And these arpeggio shapes are a good way to understand how the notes relate to the harmony. Um, playing only arpeggios though, like up and down. And then is not very musical though. We're get, we'll, we'll get to that a little bit towards the end. So in A7 here, I want to show you an arpeggio shape that is very, very common in the style. It's the idea, well, traditionally, if someone were to show you an A7 arpeggio, they would show you this. You could play that, but it's not really in the style. I'm not saying that's never done, but what's really in the style would be to, for example, if you start on the note A here, start on the note A, and then from here on out, you're gonna only play this, and then this, and then this, but then you're not gonna play this. You're gonna play this. That's more typical in the style. And then you don't have to do that last bit because that's just the lick I did. That's very typical, that's why. So you have this. And when you go back down, you can do this. Or you can start here. So the idea is start on the A, but then after don't play the A anymore. So, <clears throat> That's that. Over the D minor, uh, a very typical shape to use for improvisation is actually just the D minor triad. So now I'm going to make an improvisation using these two shapes. And then for G minor, I'm going to go up here. One, two, a one, two, three, four. noticed that I combined a little bit with some of the licks that I did. So I'll do another improvisation, maybe combine with some of the phrases. One, two, I want two, three, four. <laughs> I 
one point over the A7, I think I did something like so. But then you can and you're gonna hear it so much when you listen to a lot of good music, you're gonna hear certain sounds repeated, uh, common themes, and then somehow it's just gonna be in your ear, and you're gonna reproduce it with your fingers, hopefully anyway. So those are arpeggio shapes. For the D minor triad, at one point I started adding this, this note, which is called the sixth. Because one of the phrases I showed you had that. So here's the D minor with a six. And if I start from the low E string, then you have this. I did the same thing over G minor. So again, this is kind of like phase two where you're not a complete beginner but you have a little bit of knowledge here that you can use these arpeggio shapes in conjunction with the phrases. And you may have noticed that I played some of the phrases with tiny variations where I mix it with my knowledge of the arpeggio. It's, see, it's easier said than done though. In the beginning it will take a little bit of work. We can do the exact same thing in this position now. So A7, um, I will show you this arpeggio. Start on the note A, then play this. Don't play the note here, the A here. Play B flat. Or D minor. Start with the triad, actually. Then add the six. So, let's try an improvisation now with this new shape. One, two, I want. Two, three, four. There we go. Phase two point A over the A seven. So it's very typical to ascend with that arpeggio. By the way, you don't always have to start on the note A. You can start on the note C sharp. You can start on the note E. But if you just happen to start on the note A, start on the note A, but then after don't play the A again. Or if you're gonna play the A, do something like this. It resets the whole thing. But okay, so it's typical to ascend with that arpeggio. It's actually a diminished arpeggio. This is what we call C sharp diminished, or E diminished, or B flat diminished, or G. They all have the same name. If you don't understand that, don't worry. But it's like this. And what's very typical is to descend with this scale, especially when we're in the minor key as we are here. called D harmonic minor starting on the A so at Berkeley I think they call this I didn't go to Berkeley but I have a lot of Berkeley friends they call this mixo flat 9 flat 13 but it's played descending this is very typical in the style rarely is it played ascending unless unless you want to but I'm just saying what's typical in the style what sounds native so you play as the arpeggio ascending and then you go descend so the notes are if I start on the note A it's A, G, F, E, D, C sharp, B flat, A. Those are the notes. And try to visualize this chord though, as you play. I like to start on the B flat though, the flat nine. D minor. So let's try an improvisation. So in, in this position, it'll be like this. I'll start on the note E. Hopefully you know the notes on your fretboard so you can locate those notes that I those seven notes that I mentioned. Okay, here's an improvisation. One, two, I want two, three, four.
that's very typical over the A7 chord. Phase three. Uh, it's not that scales are not used, but they're used in, in specific ways and it's probably gonna go beyond the scope of this video. So I just wanna talk to you about things that make you sound native. Okay, phase three, we're gonna learn to decorate the chords. The A7 and the D minor, we can uh, add simple decorations. For guitar players, this is gonna be very, very easy. You notice that this A7 arpeggio I showed you earlier. So one note here, and then two notes here, uh, two notes on this string, two notes on this string, one note on this string, two notes. Why am I saying this? When you have two notes, you can fill in the blanks. Simple as that. Same thing with a D minor. So I first showed you this D minor 6 arpeggio. You can have... Simple as that. <laughs> you have to use your ears and instincts though. And that's what I did in one of my previous improvisations. I think I did a D minor, like I did something... Because I had this D minor arpeggio. There we go. Let's try an improvisation. One, two, a one, two, three. other ornaments on the a7 you can take um, this approach look at the a triad sorry a triad and you do a half step below so in this position and you do the same thing with D minor Just a half step below, so you end up with this. And let's uh, let's try an improvisation this way. One, two, I want two, three, four. Remember that in this video, I'm going I'm giving you a lot of information, but each information you should probably take what, however long it takes for you to get used to them. And again, it could be weeks, maybe it could be days, depends on your learning abilities. And if you're one of the slower ones, it's okay, take your time. And even if you practice them and then you forget them, try to watch this video a few times over the course of a year, like maybe watch this video a hundred times and eventually it'll sink in. But the, the most helpful thing is to keep listening to good music. Here's another ornament over the A7 chord. And now over the A7 chord, it just so happens you can do a half step above when you're in a minor key, as we are here. So we have. So I'm using the triad. For the D minor, it's not going to be a half step. It's going to be like this. For the root. For the third. For the fifth, you have two choices. You have this, or use one or the other. Use your ears to decide. Earth, I can explain some theory behind it, but I don't want to. I just want you to train your instincts. And that's it. Let's try an improvisation with these ideas. One, two, a one, two, three, four.
after that, you can start having a lot of fun. You can combine things. You can do... I'll show you something simple. Here's one common possibility. That was for A, 7. For D minor... For the G minor, in this song, in which is with the key of D minor, we use the shape, which you should know by now. We're gonna use, we're gonna do this. Instead of doing, we're gonna use the E natural. So E natural, so on the fifth of the G minor, as opposed to E flat. Which you can use if you want to, just give it a try. If it doesn't sound, if it sounds good to you, use it. But this will be more um, quote unquote natural in this key to use E natural. So here's an improvisation using different ideas. One, two, I want two, three, four. So there are actually tons of ornaments like this. Um, I'm just showing you basic stuff. I don't know which phase we're at now, but let's move on. I'm going to show you phrases that actual gypsy jazz musicians use. I'm not saying that they didn't use what I showed you previously, but I simplified things a lot. But this would be very, very typical uh, gypsy jazz phrase nowadays. Uh, and you find a whole bunch of them in my beginner gypsy jazz lesson. You can also find a whole bunch of them in a, in a lesson I did for DC Music School called Gypsy Jazz Guitar Technique. So I'll just, I won't show you too many because you can actually support me by buying the lessons. But here's one in A7. Popularized by Stokolo Rosenberg or Stokolo Rosenberg. It starts on the end of four. I'm gonna play with the rhythm guitar. One, two, I want two, three, four. Okay, here's one over D minor, very, very, the quint, well, not the quintessential, but one of the quintessential D minor, uh, minor licks. One, two, I want two, three, four. Okay, and then check it out, what you can do uh, over dark eyes. Let's play a little bit faster. So now you're a little bit more advanced, or you're one of the advanced beginners. I will use the advanced licks, but I'll also improvise a little bit. One, two, I want two, three, four. If you're an advanced player, try to listen to different versions of Dark Eyes or minor swing songs that are in minor tonalities and check out what they do with the dumpers and lift and then copy and paste and try to understand what's going on in the phrase so that you can make them your own eventually. And then all the arpeggio shapes and um, little scale shapes that I showed you, try to use them in different, discover them in different positions. And then you can end up with an improvisation. I'm gonna, I'll try to do a very basic improvisation. When I mean basic, I mean not, no fancy substitutions, no fancy notes, using just simple notes uh, and the concepts that I showed you, okay? Let's see what happens. One, two, one, two, three, four, one. <laughs>
help. I don't know if you enjoyed that solo, but I tried to use only simple things, only things that I showed you con conceptually. But then I worked out, oh, well, I've been playing for a long time, so I know my fingerboard fairly well. Basically, this is kind of how I would teach this style of music and um, how I learned songs in this style. I learned the chords. Um, I learned different versions because it's possible to harmonize songs in different ways because nowadays people play B flat here and it's kind of beyond the scope of this lesson but even if they're playing B flat well check out the recording by Django I think it was 1948 or 47 someone I think it was the bass player playing B flat but Django doesn't care he stays in D minor in fact he plays D minor 6 which is this note B natural clashes over the B flat so I'd rather show you what Django did than what people do today because often today it becomes so standardized that it's just one thing whereas back in the day with Django it was more, there was more freedom involved. So let me just show you another way of playing the melody that might be a little bit more interesting using a few ornaments. Uh, I'm just going to play for you and you're going to have to copy or if you have to cheat by looking at the tap go ahead. One, two, a one, two. <laughs> There we go. I added a few rhythmic variations, a few extra notes that outlined the harmony while still remaining faithful to the melody. And that's often the approach that jazz musicians take to playing melodies. Well, it depends. Sometimes it's also nice to play the melody in a basic way, but hopefully not so basic that it sounds like a robot. It still needs to swing if you're playing swing music. That's kind of it for now. There's so much more I could talk about, but hopefully it's something that could get you started. So if you're totally new to Gypsy Jazz on the guitar, this is, I think, a really good way to start. Be sure to check out some of my other colleagues though to see what they have to say. Maybe they have other approaches that work better for you. By all means, go for it. <laughs> How am I strumming from here? <laughs> I can't strum. <laughs> okay. If you have any questions, feel free to type in the comments. I'll see if I can answer them. Maybe make a follow-up video if there are other tunes you want me to analyze like that. I'll be happy to do so if I have the time and if you guys support me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Never say never again, again Cause here I am in love again Head over heels in love again with you I'll never say never kiss you again Cause here I am kissing you again That's the thing I said I'd never do